Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Batman painting series. In this one we're doing dumpsters and, uh, well, more particularly the, the weathering of uh, dumpsters and a little bit of graffiti on there. Um, just a, a quick cheat on the graffiti, nothing nothing really stylish to be seen there. So, um, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it and um, let's get on with it. So, oh, here we go. Those are the colours that you're going to need, uh, Rhinox Hide, Scrag Brown and then a couple of oranges. I'll start off with a, um, a desaturated one because um, it's easier to match up with the, the lighter browns. Keep the browns with a bit of red in them unless you're going for the really dark base coat. And uh, a nice bright orange to finish. I've got some riser rust knocking about but um, we'll see if I need that. I doubt if we'll need it today. The other thing you'll need is a um, kitchen roll, wiping off um, the paint, and a sponge. It's always handy to keep a couple of sponges from your blister packs because they're, they're great for weathering, gives nice random patterns. And a stipple brush. Um, I can't remember for the life of me where I got it from. Uh, it was an art shop in town, I'm sure, but I've, I've tried to order one online in the past and it came back as a, like a half an inch brush and um, it's totally useless unless you use it on the roads so it's no good for little pieces like uh, taxi doors and stuff like that so um, if you can get one of these brilliant okay all right let's make a start okay so I've got my paint just off camera in a palette and I've got my sponge here. I'm just testing what kind of patterns I'm going to get and also to get the excess off because I don't want to go like that. <laughs> so once I'm happy I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to start Add in paint and it's a little bit too heavy for my liking there actually. I've gone with a different bit of the sponge there. But that's okay, we can work around that. And the idea is to build up the brown very slowly in areas that you want it. And to try and to keep it you know, a random placement as well. That base is getting in the way so I'm going to take them off. So I'm dabbing off the paint on the wet towel. Should say. I'm going to change the direction that you actually go on. So if I start that way, turn it and turn it and keep turning it. again. I want quite a bit towards the, well across the back and I want to go up, build it up around to that bottom corner there because I think that's where um, that's where the moisture would be and that's where the dust there, uh, the rust would, uh, would accumulate. That's the plan anyway. If you start doing all the edges first and then start building it up then.
Okay, I am fairly happy with that coat. Might do a little bit more down the bottom of this one actually. I want quite a, a heavy rust on the back. Not that I'm probably going to ever see it because it'll be up against the wall, but I'll know. <laughs> and if you know, it's going to bug you, isn't it? So, all right, not too happy about that, but we're going to cover that bit up with um, lighter colours anyway. So I'm going to switch to a different piece of sponge, so you don't have to, but I'm a fussy person. And what, I'll just show you what I do with the sponge, I'll, I'll, I'll rip it off, I'll fold it over and then I pick out bits just to get a nice random pattern. And I'm ready to go then. This layer is the scrag brown and I'm going to try and keep inside the areas where, I've, where I did the rhinox colour. And I'm just keeping it towards where most of the rhinox has been. So that'll be down the bottom and a little bit into the corner as well. The top of it. Okay. And this is where I switch to the the stippling brush because it's slightly more controlled than just using the uh, sponge. So I dipped it in the scrag brown. I'm dabbing it on the paper, you can see there's there's not too much coming off now and I think it's safe to use on the dumpster so and I can I can be slightly more precise with this one. So come along the bottom of the edge right? I'll try and break that bit up. Remember I went in too heavy with a rhinox, so let's kind of dab around the edges of that. Just try and break it up a bit. I think it's working. Okay, so that's the scrag brown done. I'm going straight in. I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush or anything. I'm going straight in with the, the Jacaro orange. It's a nice desaturated orange. Perfect for rust. And no, that's too heavy, so let's get rid of some of that. That's a bit better. And it's just a case of going in a smaller area again. I'm going to try and keep it random. still wet you can soften it with your fingers great okay I'm fairly happy with it apart from that bit there so what I'm gonna do is do a quick fix I'm getting some more rhinox hide I'm gonna use 
use the the sponge again but put another layer on so I'm gonna go further up try and break it up even more and go heavier in another area okay oh, that's not too bad and then scrag brown to stipple on top of that and straight in the orange just clean it a little bit Get rid of the excess. That's a nice level of recovery, that. <laughs> okay, so fairly happy with that. So I'm going to move on to the next stage now. So for the next stage um, I'm going to do some chipped metal. So I've got Vallejo's uh, steel on the palette and I'm getting rid of the excess from the sponge. Make sure I'm not going to have any surprises. And I want to go across the top of these bits on the edges. And the odd bit here and there. Just to look like a, a chip or a scratch. Hopefully I'll be able to see those little chips. I'll go on the bottom as well. That was crashed into something. Or... Okay, happy with that. So for the next stage I'm going to use uh, some pigment, this uh, carriage grime. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to turn out but I'm going to wing it anyway. So I've got my carriage grime ready, I'm using it straight out of the lid. And what I'm planning to do is to just put it where I haven't got any weathering at all, which is under here. So I think it'll get pretty grimy. And I'll fill in that hole there. Same on the other side. And I'm going to create some streaks now. Uh, this is a size 1 brush. I figured it, it would just run or trickle down there and this dries quite clear it's quite a subtle it looks quite stark to start with but it is quite a subtle pigment so I'll just run it down there and oh, we'll have another one there and I'll fill in the top part of the rail. Um, you can use it on the rivets as well on here but I'm planning to go in here with uh, there's another one they do like a soot or well, you can use like a black wash like null oil just to get some definition I'll get some in there and in there and then I'll go for a, another streak you don't want to use these you can use like a an oil. It's a bit thick there, so I've just got some water on my brush and I'm pushing it off 
Just getting rid of it. I'll go in again. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to do the same here now. So to finish off with the grime, I'm putting a, a line into the, the actual grooves of the dumpster. I'm going all the way around. Well, I think I just need to go on the back now, but we'll see what it dries like um, while I get the soot version out now. So I've got the soot um, version now. Uh, it's slightly darker than the carriage grime and what I want to do with it is go in these grooves again but stay up the top part the top part of the groove because that will be in shadow rather than the bottom part because the bottom part will be quite light if, you know, if, the, if the light is coming from above the top part of that groove will be in shadow that's the theory anyway I'll do the same on the back. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll put some more in there. And so it's a little bit darker than the other one. And what you can do then is outline the rivets if you want. But I'm not sure it's going to be that apparent when it's dry because it's, it's quite a subtle product a streak enhance the streak okay We're almost there I'll do the rivets on this side as well it don't have to be perfect doing that for a bit of variation really okay all right so that's the blue part done we'll move on to the top now for the top I'm going to be using smoke um, again I've never used this before so bear with me but all I'm going to do is to uh, apply it into the the grooves uh, on, the, on the top of the on the top of the dumpster right I might have to refocus hang on okay so here we go with the smoke I'll try and get it in there and just go along the lines Let's get rid of the excess. It's that easy to use, it's great. It does, these uh, liquid pigments come in a set and it comes with a remover if you need it, but I've, I've never used it yet. Let's use my finger. Oh, let's go along there. Get some in there and underneath. I think we're almost there. There's not much you can do with the top really, unless you wanted to sponge on a like a highlight. But I'm happy with what we've got so far. Last one now, it could be quite interesting. Rain marks is actually white, so 
that'll be the next day. So again, this is an experiment. <laughs> um, I added a little bit of water to it. And I think the idea is to just do streaks, I think, because rain does leave streaks, doesn't it? That's the plan. Could be a complete disaster and go totally wrong, but I like experimenting. So I'm still using the same brush there, size one, it's got a lovely point on it. As you can probably see, the size of the streaks are quite small, well, thin. Um, I would go longer, but uh, I tend to lose straightness if I go too long, so I'll keep them short-ish. So I'm going to use it on the front as well. And keep them quite close together and up the top of the dumpster. Again, I'm not too worried if they look stark at the minute because I know they're going to dry away to pretty much nothing. I'll have to go in with that soot again. Um, we'll go down the back as well, see what it looks like on there. Just got a bit of variation in length as well. I'm quite excited to see what this turns out like actually. I'm going to go another coat, but I'm about halfway down. If anything, it'll light it in the right area where I want it. So. is almost dry now you can just about see them that's quite a nice effect actually we'll put some on there So I think uh, two coats I went in uh, on that bit there and I think it's a little bit too heavy for what I want so luckily with this set there's a, a remover I'll show you what it looks like now when I've, I've finished but I'm just going to remove a couple, of, a couple of the heavier streaks I'm hoping it removes it because it's gone quite right light now We'll see what that dries like. There's the remover. Okay, so the last stage, um, if you're feeling brave, put a bit of graffiti on it. Now, feel free to go wild with a an acrylic paint pen or something like that. But, um, I've uh, I've just highlighted that area as um, as a starting point with an airbrush, and I'm going to put the lettering in now um, with some black. I've no idea what to do, but bear with me. Um, I might go on my signature DB. I'm 
worried about now is the outline of the D because I'm going to be filling that space in, you know, blocking it in with a colour. Um, now then. Got the outline there of the beat. It's not great. But as I say, we'll be filling that in with, I think, red. So I'll do that next. Um, let's thin out some red on the side of the palette here. I usually do this on a much larger scale, um, if you've probably seen some of my uh, buildings that I've done. And I usually use a stencil and an airbrush. <laughs> but we'll go with it. that bad actually. Just put a bit more thickness into that line there. Another coat of red, it's not dry yet but we'll go over the top. to get that colour down. I'll give it a blast with the hair dryer now off camera. So happy with the, uh, the red there. So I'm just going to make these lines a little bit thicker. a shadow. Um, I usually do a different technique to this but I'm going to do a shadow around it now in uh, purple. I've got purple on my palette here so I'll use that. I'll probably have to do the lettering again. Let me redefine that black border. bit of zoom so I've added the um, some other bits on here and there and I've sorted the letters out you know I redefined the borders um, to make them stand out a bit more and I've added a little few little squiggles here and there but I'm more or less happy so I'll take some nice pictures and I can do a wrap up then okay there we are finished um, quite enjoyed these it was nice to go back and revisit the uh, the weathering techniques I um, haven't done them for a while, so it was really good. Um, on hindsight, 
just uh, I'm not really happy about the rain streaks on the top um, I'd probably go without it or probably would skip the second coat it looks okay on the front of one of the dumpsters but um, it obviously just needs one coat on it so just stick to that so yeah it was good um, good trying out the the liquid pigments as well quite enjoyed them so yeah hopefully uh, you enjoyed it and you got something out of it and um, yeah we'll see you in the next episode cheers <laughs>